Good morning. Today we are at MSP Terminal 2, and we are awaiting our Southwest flight to Denver. The start of my California trip saw my wife and I assembled at MSP Airport in the Twin Cities of Minnesota on a Sunday morning in January 2024. It seemed as if a lot of people were flying away today with winter vacation plans, or perhaps to stage themselves to watch NFL playoff games in person across the country. Even at 6 a.m., there was a line halfway to the LRT station pre-security, though new sniffer dog procedures meant that travelers in Minnesota no longer have to remove their liquids or shoes to proceed through TSA. MSP is the Twin Cities' sole airport, located south of and between Minneapolis and St. Paul. The field has grown over the years since Northwest Airlines was the dominant force here. Terminal 1, with its expansive concourses, sits between the two parallel runways, while Terminal 2 lies on the south end of the field. Named for Senator Hubert H. Humphrey, the original terminal building was a repurposed United Airlines hangar that served as the airport's charter flight and international customs processing facility. Interestingly enough, while there is an LRT link between the two terminals, it is landside or pre-security, so I would not recommend making any connections at MSP between flights serving Terminal 1's legacy carriers and Terminal 2, which hosts low-cost carriers like Sun Country and Southwest. The formers with whom we'll be flying to Denver today, where we'll catch our connecting flight to Oakland for several days in California. I may not fly too often, but I can find a free spoon when I need it. Terminal 2 is about as straightforward of an airport experience as it goes. It's a rectangular building with ticketing and baggage on one side, 14 gates on the other, and security in between. With a fraction of the gates compared to the historic Terminal 1, you could be assured a more contained sort of airport chaos when flying out of Terminal 2. With a handful of food and drink options, plenty of device charging points, and some interesting artistic displays in between the endless array of internal advertising for MSP Airport, the Twin Cities' only airport option. We're flying Southwest Airlines today, thanks to a great half-off fare sale I picked up on a few months prior. If you're unfamiliar, Southwest operates point-to-point -point flights throughout North America. They have a unique boarding process that forgoes assigned seats for assigned places in a boarding queue. At check-in, you're assigned a spot in line. You can buy into an earlier spot in line at ticket purchase, or be afforded such if you're a member of the military, traveling with small children, or require assistance to board. I opted to check in precisely 24 hours before our 8.30 departure, which snagged us a spot in the middle of the B boarding group on this half full first leg of our travel today. Our flight today is aboard the much maligned Boeing 737 MAX 8, the aircraft that was grounded some five years ago due to flight control issues that have since been resolved through software updates and pilot retraining. Once aboard, it's a free-for-all to pick any seat you'd like, Though the process is rather calm being in the upper Midwest, where the locals apologize through lines for fun just about anywhere. We snag exit row seats over the wing and won't end up having anyone else seated beside us for this first leg of the journey. Leg room is a bit better than most economy class setups and is enhanced by these new seats on the max. Just the software and two sensors. Leslie. Potions. And stuff. It feels like a pretty good cabin, and we're already pretty excited for the start of our trip. Quick flight this morning, just one hour and 37 minutes. Probably be over uh, 20 minutes early in there. Latest weather, really nice uh, so far. From the cloudy skies, calm winds, temperatures 43 degrees. Welcome aboard. Put on your safety information card. Place the vest over your head. 
Wrap the strap around your waist, buckle it in front and pull the strap to tighten. Watch outside the cabin, pull down on the red tab to inflate the bed. The baby needs to be in somebody's lap, cannot be up when the plane's moving. Pull down on the red tab to inflate the vest once outside the cabin to manually inflate, flow into the tube at your shoulder. The vest comes equipped with a light that turns on automatically in the water. For use of the light vest on an infant, refer to your safety information card. Flight attendants will distribute additional vests if needed. This aircraft is equipped with four life rafts, two life rafts in the forward ceiling compartment, two life rafts at the ceiling compartment mid-cabin. We are coming through the cabin to make sure those seat belts are fastened, seat backs and tray tables are in the full upright lock position and all your carry-ons are to go the seat in front of you or in an overhead bin, leaving the area around your feet completely clear. Smoking, including the use and charging of electronic cigarettes, is never allowed in an aircraft, including the lavatories. Federal law prohibits tampering with, disabling, or destroying any smoke detectors in an aircraft lavatory. If needed, four oxygen masks will drop down. for departure. Enjoy your flight.
After a concise takeoff roll, we appropriately turn southwest toward the plains of Middle America. Our route today takes us across South Dakota and Nebraska before converging on the plains of eastern Colorado. A drink and snack service begins about 30 minutes into the flight and the ride of the five-year-old Max 8 is very smooth. Southwest offers in-flight Wi-Fi with streaming to your personal devices, but the view from the wing is more than enough entertainment for the less than couple of hours it takes us to approach our destination of Denver, Colorado. Okay, so here we are, Southwest Airlines 737 MAX 8. I've only flown into the Mile High City once before, in 2016 with United in first class aboard an older 737. On that trip I was connecting to an overnight accommodation on Amtrak's California Zephyr, bound for Chicago. Today I'll be laying over for a little more than an hour at the expansive airport on the front range of the Rocky Mountains. Though from my west-facing view, it's hard to tell where we might be landing, only that it's certainly not yet California.
Alighting our plane via the jet bridge, we find ourselves in the newer end of Concourse C, where Southwest Airlines flights to all points around America, Mexico, and the Caribbean can be found staging passengers on this mild winter morning. Constructed in the late 90s to replace Stapleton International Airport, which was located a short distance west, Denver's International Airport is a well-established modern facility that's already showing its experience in moving folks around the world despite not yet being 30 years old. A centralized people mover gets passengers between the concourses or to their luggage. I hope to be back in Denver this year to profile their light rail system, as Frontier Airlines offers some very attractively cheap fares from MSP, and the light rail line was recently extended all the way out to the airport. Our connecting flight to Oakland was sold out, and I didn't get a window view from the older 737 that took us out to Oakland, California. So that's going to do it for this video today. As always, thanks for watching. I look forward to showing you more of the ways I get to places and all the cheap things I do while I'm there. See you next time.